So we're finally on the topic of marginal analysis and supply decision. Now, the firm can use marginal analysis to determine the profit maximizing output. Now, we know that marginal revenue is constant and marginal cost eventually increases as output increases. And that is what we found out in the last video with this uh, graph. So, Profit is maximized by producing uh, the output at which marginal revenue equals marginal cost, or MR equals MC. Now, this is what is shown here in this graph. So, let's take a look at this graph. Now, when we are producing at a quantity of 8 shoes per day, we know that from producing one more shoe, uh, we will profit. So let's just highlight that here. This is the profit that we will get from the ninth uh, shoe um, sold per day. Now, if we uh, if we go beyond that, if we um, are making ten shoes per day, then we suffer a loss. So that's the loss loss from the tenth shoe. So then let's just mark these. Now we know from the last video that our profit maximization point is nine. And that is because marginal cost equals marginal revenue. So from this graph, we can see that if marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost, which happens here uh, at a quantity of eight shoes per day, the marginal revenue is above the marginal cost, then economic profit increases if output increases. Now, if marginal revenue, on the other hand, is less than marginal cost, then, um, then economic profit decreases if, uh, if output increases. But if marginal revenue is equal to marginal uh, costs, like, like I have here, then uh, economic profit will decrease if output is increased or uh, increased or decreased. So at this point, this point is the uh, point where economic profit is maximized. Now we got to talk about some temporary shutdown can, uh, decisions. Now, if the firm makes an economic loss, then it must decide to exit the market or to stay in the market. Now, if we stay, then we must decide uh, whether to keep on producing something or to shut down temporarily. And this decision uh, must be one that minimizes loss because we want the loss to be as small as possible because, well, nobody likes losing money. So let's do a loss comparison. So the firm's loss, its total loss is pretty much the total fixed cost, the cost that uh, it will have to pay uh, whether it's in operation or not, uh, plus the total variable cost, which pretty much stems from operations, minus the total revenue, which is the amount of money we make from our sales. So all in all, abbreviated, it's TFC plus TVC minus TR. Now, TVC can be further uh, dumped down to average variable cost minus uh, product times quantity. Well, that's actually TVC minus TR. So this, these two equations pretty much can get dumbed down to this equation. So <coughs> if the firm shuts down, then the quantity is zero. So we're pretty much not selling anything, and all the firm has to pay is its total uh, total fixed costs because that is the cost that we have to pay no matter what, uh, no matter no matter whether we are in operation or not. So in this case, the economic loss is equal to the total fixed cost. So this economic loss is the largest that the firm must bear. Now the shutdown point. A firm's shutdown point is the price and quantity at which it is 
indifferent between producing and shutting down. It's pretty much the point where the average variable cost is at its minimum, and uh, it is also the point at which the MC curve, the marginal cost curve, crosses the average variable cost curve. At the shutdown point, the firm is totally indifferent between producing and shutting down uh, temporarily. The firm incurs a cost equal to uh, the total fixed cost from either action. That's a lot of our words, so we'll just go through an example to, um, to clarify what I actually mean. So let's take this graph as an example. Now here are the criterias. This graph will show the shutdown point. The minimum average variable cost is $17 per shoe. So to make our shoe, the minimum average cost, variable cost, is $17. Now, if the price is $17, then uh, the profit maximizing output is seven shoes per day. Why do I not have shoes here? Seven shoes per day. Uh, and in this case, the firm incurs a loss equal to the total fixed cost. So pretty much, um, it is at this point um, where the price, meaning the profit maximizing output, uh, having being seven, uh, seven shoes per day, and the price being $17, our total cost or, or our average variable cost is $17 and our marginal revenue is also $17 so that pretty much cancels out and all that all the loss that we incur is actually our total fixed cost now if our price is between $17 and $20 then of course the firm will produce the quantity at which the marginal cost equals price in this way the firm covers all variable costs and it also covers some of, the, some of its fixed costs. So the loss incurred in this, in this case will be less than the total fixed cost. So uh, if we are uh, selling these shoes at uh, a price between 17 and 20, then we will cover this average uh, variable cost at, at seven shoes per day. If, if we're making seven, seven shoes per day and the price of each shoe, seven, each pair of shoes is uh, between or is greater than 17 or uh, or it can, you can be, it can be between 17 and 20, in that case, you will cover our average variable cost and we will have enough money to cover some of our uh, some of our total fixed costs. So the actual loss that we incur will be less than the total fixed cost. And uh, I hope that makes sense. It's pretty simple if you ask me. Uh, but uh, this is where I'll stop this video. In the next video, we'll talk more about the firm supply curve. Other than that, please rate, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time.